Okay, wait, wait, don't click off. Just wait. I want to explain to you what semiotics is and I'll do it in less than 30 seconds. Semiotics is the study of signs and meaning making. What is meaning making? If I do this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is semiotics. Discovering how you know that. Done. Finished. So, what is this? This is what everything on this planet boils down to. Everybody's going to tell you that this doesn't matter, but it does. And I'm not trying to be politically correct or to, you know, hold you like a baby and say it's all going to be okay. It's all about what's in your heart and your personality because it's not. When you go for a job interview, when you go to the beach, even when you're working out in the gym or you're out at an event, the only thing people care about is this. And if it is like this, then you're screwed. So it better be like this or like this. Now, everyone knows I'm not even going to lie to you people. Men with small churros make more money than men with big bazongas. Okay, that's just a fact. Now, everything in life has a trade-off. Small churros, more money. Bazonga, less money. Now, why is that? I mean, why would somebody need to do that to survive well it's called overcompensation <laughs> generally or technically psychologically there's no such thing as overcompensation it's just called compensation which is a psychological term but since we're doing this whole dumbing myself down thing for the algorithm i'll just say it's called overcompensation so overcompensation is what humans do when they need to overcome some sort of inferiority that they feel. And again, not going to be coddling you through this experience. You all wanted extremism. You're getting extremism. So I'm talking about escapism right now. Okay. Because people who practice escapism it's not just about playing video games or gambling addictions or whatever addiction is popular at the moment, okay? Escapism is not just about that. That's what the media or society chooses to focus on. But escapism also includes hustle culture, trying to make lots of money, trying to acquire lots of things, buying things, trying to look cool, trying to, to look, um, use makeup and use face cream to change how you look and plastic surgery and all of that stuff. It's all escapism that's trying to make up for something. And for men, it's trying to make up for having a small churro. Now, a lot of women will say that they don't trust guys who are metrosexuals. And a lot of the time, they won't be able to tell you why they feel that way. I'll tell you why. Because guys who are metrosexuals are hiding the fact or overcompensating for the fact that they have small churros. Same with super rich guys. People who are controlling and they want to be boss and make lots of money. I mean, I'm not going to mention names, but... Isn't it funny that the people in the Red Pill community, when you actually see some of their pictures that have leaked, they have teeny tiny churros. But that's not a bad thing, okay? We just need to stop this whole politicizing of information and just get down to brass tacks because if we don't, a lot of people are going to get hurt and a lot of people are going to go like we've seen with these red pill people who have completely lost it because they're desperately trying to compensate for it. 
Now, the reason I can sit here and not care about how I look and have my hair all whatever and not shave is obvious. I don't need to compensate for anything because I got a bazonga. Now, I'm not saying that either or is better than the other because these things are genetics. You can't like change it. It's just how you're born. And I think it's ridiculous that people put these semiotic connotations to things but that's how that's how life is okay that's how it is i'm just here to deliver the news so you got a bazonga then you can look like this and jump on a video and not give a shit but if you got a churros then you gotta you know do the whole hey welcome to youtube well welcome to my channel guys i got something hot for you you know you gotta do the whole thing uh not interested don't have to do it and that's maybe to my detriment because maybe that's why the people with the small churros are coming to start doing that maybe that's why though they have 10,000 100,000 subscribers a million subscribers 15 million subscribers because they work hard and they have to now where does all of this come from where am i getting this crazy stuff from this radical dude with the bazonga where is he getting this from now it's not because I have a bazonga that I know this, it's because I just like to read. And if I'm a snob for that, fine. But, you know, it is what it is. See, that's semiotics, guys. You know exactly what I mean when I do this. And you know exactly what I mean when I do that semiotics look it up so a lot of this i attribute to about the mid uh, 20th century like 1945 60s right when um that dude fdr the socialism leaning guy in america remember when the people came back from world war ii and then he wanted to build the economy, so he made a lot of social programs and he gave people like incentives to build families and have houses and have the American dream or whatever. That's when I have traced this problem or phenomenon uh, starting, this escapism thing. And we're talking about men in particular, right? So in the past, Men with small churros, it was easy because all you needed to do was become a provider. And FDR and people like him and general government in societies made it easy for men to become providers. Even in South Africa with the apartheid government, by suppressing the black people and giving white people more economic power, they could get away with having small churros and being desirable enough to have families because they could have something to compensate for the small churro because if you ask any woman or gay guy they don't care about the churro size if the money is 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 up that's where the city boy city girl phenomenon comes from but that comes later probably another topic altogether but you see these angry red pill people saying, ah, women just want money and no, 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 no. Well, yes, people want to be provided for. You need to offer something valuable in a relationship. Otherwise, what's the point? Now, one out of 10 people are not like that. They are true romantics like me. That's why I don't use my bazonga for money because i am that one out of ten person who really believes in romance and call me dumb or stupid but i do like it i don't like being a statistic because i research about crazy people i don't want to act like the crazy people i research i want to live outside of research statistics so naturally i would choose to be a romantic but 
90% of the people will sacrifice what they want for security. That's just a normal fact. You can see it in statistics of people who enter into sex work industry. 95% of them are unhappy, but they need to do it for the money. Or people who stay in abusive relationships. They don't want to be there, but they need to do it for the money or the house. That's just facts. So, back in the 50s, men had easy way out. You work, you provide for your family, and you pretty much guaranteed the normal picket, white picket fences, reality, all of that fun stuff, okay? And this kept going, going, going until about the 70s when people started to wake up. We're not going to go into why, many different reasons, but there was kind of a breakdown in, in, in the system, as it were. And so you started seeing a lot more people, even in South Africa, we had the whole black consciousness movement where people were saying, no, this is not fair. We are not going to give people the synthetic reality. And we've seen it in America with Vietnam and we saw it in Europe um, and Eastern Europe, especially. But we're not getting into that because... If I'm wearing this, you know that we're talking about relationships and intimacy. So, one of the things, and this is the boomer generation will understand what I'm talking about. One of the things, though, or the byproducts that started happening back then and that are affecting men now is work. First, you would just work, you like eight hours of work and then eight hours at home, eight hours sleeping. Nice, balanced life for the common man. But then work started becoming more and more competitive. The more you work, the more money you make. The more money you make, the more power over other men you would have. The more power you have, then the more desirable you become. And men with small churros were able to get richer and richer and richer and richer because someone with a small churro trust me there's no limit to their power hungriness if you see someone who's consistently power hungry and working hard you can bet your bottom dollar that nigga has a small churro telling you right now now it doesn't make you feel better because you know being poor isn't fun but at the same time, it, it's kind of sad that they feel they need to escape in such a way. Because they believe that the churro size matters. Like I said, 90% of people do. And we'll get to the breakdown of why. But anyway, so as people started working more and more and more and more and more, making more and more and more and more money, it was a great way for small churro people to gain power. And they did, and they have, and they still are. But now what happened with that is that there was no more romance. There was no more emotional intimacy between people. You know, fathers preferred to be outside working rather than being at home raising their children with their partners. And then there's a breakdown in the family, and then the kids have no no center and so it's easy for them to fall into that same kind of pattern of you know having no real identity and we'll talk about identity crisis another time maybe tomorrow but anyway i want to focus on this whole churro thing because that's the center of this escapism and it's terrible now because back then, at least there were jobs for people, even though they were synthetically provided by the government, FDR and all those other socialist communist programs that people hate. That gave people something to do and a way to mitigate. Um, can I say mitigate? Is that too advanced for you people? Mitigate. That gave something for people with small churros to, to deal, a way for them to deal with it. Let's use that word. A way for them to deal with their, their, their small churros. And look, I'm not downplaying this. It's so, so, so harsh out there. I've done the research. I've looked at the data again. 
I spent 13 months researching this and if you Google this document, <laughs> Google this, read the 60 pages, you will see that I'm not just sucking this out of my beehole. I'm literally telling you something I researched. I sat with these people. I was invited into their hearts and homes and minds and I saw these things happening, okay? It's called ethnographic research, participant observation. Now, the reason that people are, 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 are escaping today is because they don't have that structure of the past. Now, it's the wild, wild west. There's no government program that's helping everyone. There are government programs helping specific people from specific communities with specific issues. And if you don't fall into that, then you're screwed. You and your small churro out on your own. And so it is a real thing because the one thing that men are scared of, the most scary thing, scariest Oh, no, I shouldn't use good grammar because people don't like that. It's snobbish. Okay, so the most scary thing, the more scariest thing that guys are afraid of dudes is people knowing <laughs> the size of their churro. Yeah, that's it. And women know. That they have all the power because of that. Because guys with small churros can't have sex. They can't get laid. Because if they do, you know the woman's going to go talk. They always talk. Trust me. I know. Listen to my voice. People think that I'm, uh, uh, how you doing? All the time. Because of that. And so women just speak freely around me. And I hear everything. And also gay guys think I'm in the community, so then they tell me everything. And then I don't say anything, I just listen. If you want to assume things, assume things. I'll be there to listen, and I'll be there to write my 60-page <laughs> document that you need to look up, okay? And so it's true. I know every churro size and bazonga in the community because everyone's told me and internationally too <laughs> and you know that terrifies guys because they don't want people to know that guys don't talk about that stuff with each other obviously sometimes they see it in the gym or whatever but no one talks about it ever you see it, but you don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> don't say nothing about nothing, you hear? That's the guy code. But the woman, they'll tell everybody and anybody. <laughs> Not everybody and anybody, but people who they think they can tell. And so, yeah, it's, 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 I understand why guys are so, um, you know, uh, what's a word for that? Uh, um, so, <laughs> Sp spazzing out, are we allowed to say that? I can see why they're doing that, because especially now with social media and everything, it just takes one woman to go and say, you've got a, a, a churro, and then it's 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 over for you and then guys with bazongas we can't empathize because we all we have is the currency of our bazonga you guys work hard and get all the views and money and whatever so screw you we don't care we will just ride our bazonga because sometimes we don't even want to you know sleep with the people we sleep with but we have to because our bazonga gets us the benefits that you guys get from money and from popularity and fame. So we're not going to speak and help you in general. 
there's the divide in the in the men's community. It's the divide between the people with the small churros and the big bazongas. Although that's kind of redundant because bazonga just is big. It doesn't have to be a big bazonga. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Already. <laughs> And why do you think people hate Africans so much? <laughs> I mean, it's a threat to their their continued uh, genetic whatever, their families. That's what people think. I'm not saying that. That's what they think. It's a very primal thing, this, 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 um, this thing. <laughs> and so... Back then, as I was saying, people had synthetic ways of dealing with it, of getting power. But now it's a free for all. That's why you see all these people telling you to hustle and to do drop shipping. And now there's drop servicing prostitutes, I mean models, where you can be like an in but I'm not even going to go into that yet. But there's all these different opportunities where you use AI to make videos and you don't have to work and you can buy crypto and you can listen to Spencer Cornelia, you can listen to Graham Stephen, you can do all of these the schemes. It's just schemes. Think about it. Imagine spending your life doing schemes just to make money. Why? Because of a small churro. And by the time the women get there, they don't care. Not all of them, obviously. But the 9 out of 10 who are not romant romantics, they don't care. They're like, oh, well, the money's there. It doesn't matter if there's a small churro. Um, I'm just going to, you know, point my heels to Jesus and think of the Louis Vuitton bags I'm going to buy with my black American Express card. Um, and not just women, even in the gay community, it's all about this or this. I mean, the first thing people ask you is to send a picture of it in the gay community. And if you think the straight community is harsh, wait till you go look at the research in the LGBT community when it comes to that. I mean, it is insane. Some people even say this guy called Paul Angelo was talking about why there's so many bottoms. And I personally think from research, it's because of the power that you get from being a woman or a bottom, a receptive person, because you get to choose based on the churro size or the bazonga. And all you have to do is just <laughs> lie back and take it. And there's a sense of power in being submissive. And a lot of people don't talk about the power of being submissive. But again, that's another episode. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the escapism of it all. So now you have these people, these men doing all these schemes, coming up with these red pill communities. And you can get one over on this person. You can do this. You can do that. And as someone with the bazonga, it's so exhausting because it's just like too much trying. You're trying too hard, too much effort, and that's not sexy. You want someone who's just confident and doesn't give a if, a ish, a shit. Can I say that? Um, and it, it makes you think, if these people are doing this now, what's going to happen in 10 years' time? Are we just going to have a whole escaped out fantasy land living people? My thing is, just accept reality. You have a small churro, it's okay, it's not your fault, it's genetic. You have a bazonga, again, you're not God's gift to the world, you're just a normal person, calm down. Don't need to use it to get ahead. Um, and just get to the root of the issue. And the root of the issue is existential anxiety. That's what I've been talking about this whole time. <laughs> and the root of the existential anxiety comes from feeling inferior, feeling like a failure. Because we don't have any of the synthetic things that we had back then where you could be successful, 
because you were either a certain race or you were born into a certain country as a certain citizen, now you have nothing. You just have you and capitalism right there in the cold light of day. And you have to make it work somehow. I mean, people before us, they didn't even have student loans, really. Now you finish school, you're 21 years old, and you have as much student loan debt as the mortgage of a house. That's insane. <laughs> and so, of course, you're going to feel like a failure almost immediately. It's it, The system is... is, is, is gotten to the point where it's almost if you don't feel like a failure then you know you you're a romantic and only one out of ten people are romantics so most of you feel like failures and most of what my data says says you feel like failures and I, I don't blame any of you so now you have this person with this churro a chimichurro <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at what I'm saying. So relax. I'm not body shaming. So you have a, a, a churro. You've got no social support. No Franklin D. Roosevelt to help you out here. <laughs> and so you start doing your drop shipping schemes. Now, obviously, these schemes are fake. So you fail at that. And you haven't even thought about what you want to do in your heart because you don't have confidence because of this. And now you start playing video games. You start watching adult movies. You start getting obsessed with looks. You think, oh, if I get a six pack, that'll compensate. If I, then maybe you take performance enhancing drugs. And then maybe you change who you are completely. Maybe to a different even version of yourself. You do whatever you can to get a hold of that power ball. Because the real ball is a churro, is a, is a donut hole. And what I'm saying is, you know, you have existential anxiety, right? Because you feel incompetent. Because of a sexual inferiority, which makes you feel like a failure, and that feeds your escapism. That's how I literally wrote it out, and that's how I just explained it. So, it doesn't help. The point of why I'm saying all of this is it doesn't help to feed into your escapism, because when you do... You're feeding your insecurity. And when you feed your insecurity, you are never going to be able to get out of your limited beliefs and limited thinking. I'm telling you to, to be dumb. Be naive. Think to yourself, well, hey, I'm just going to be myself regardless of the fact that the whole world tells me that I'm a failure or that I'm useless. Take it from someone with a bazonga. You don't need to add anything onto your personality to make up for anything. You're literally who you are. Are you going to spend your whole life feeling bad or trying to correct something you were born with? Do you think your great, 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 great grandfather had the luxury to go put face cream before going into the mines to go dig up gold? To build the community that we now live in. We owe a lot to the men who came before us. And they didn't sit around crying about their churros or bazongas or what it meant. They kept the thing moving. They kept it going. Yes, I recognize that there were certain privileges that people had and certain whatevers. But also people had to go to war all the time. And they had diseases all the time. And they only lived till the age of 20. We live till the age of 80. We have shops open 24-7. We don't have to go hunting anymore. We have so many conveniences that we should be enjoying life. We should be happy that we don't have to go dig for coal underground to power the fires, the, the nuclear power stations. 
and we should be exploring what we really want to do as people. And I know you don't want to do schemes. You don't want to go to silly universities where they teach you how to hustle and scheme and scam and pimp out people and all that rubbish. You want to be you. So stop chasing power because all you're doing is revealing to everybody that you got a small churro. And you're never going to get quality people if you're telling us inadvertently that you have a small churro. Because then we know that you are in, insecure about it and that it's e you become easy to manipulate. And you're going to attract people that the Red Pill community always complains about. You're going to attract size queens, as they say in the gay community. You're going to attract people who will use that against you because you become an easy target. And then you're going to make videos about it complaining to us and we don't want to see it. I don't care if the algorithm likes it. I don't want to know. I'm, I'm over it. So mind your business, do your thing, get over it, get help if need be. And yes, I understand. Women will talk about it. The gay guys will talk about it. Everyone will know. The only way to get rid of the stigma is if you don't care that everybody knows. Let us know. <laughs> and we know already, but just let us know that you don't care as well. Don't try and hide it. Don't try and build rocket ships that look like it. Just relax. Calm down. Okay? Now, I was watching a thing as I wrap up on Dr. Phil where they were talking about addiction and the senator from San Francisco, <laughs> Senator Weiner, um, he, he looked like he had a bazong. <laughs> And the reason why I think he had a buzonga is because... And then there was another guy called Matthew Michael Schellenberger or something. That dude has a, a small true. Am I allowed to say this? <laughs> in my mind. In my mind. In my creative... <laughs> In my creative mind, um, this is what's happening. I'm not saying this is what it is. It's all in my imagination because this is a show. This is a fictional show that I'm presenting. So they had Senator Wiener, who has a bazonga, and they had the Schellenberger guy who wrote the book San Francisco. See, I gave you a plug. Calm down. Now, in my show, in my fictional mind... In my alleged fictional mind, Schellenberger has a small churro and Wiener has a bazonga. Why? Because this will all make sense. Just just go with me. We, we, we need to use a bit of brain power, okay? I know I said I'm going to dumb things down, just a little bit of brain power. So the argument with the addiction that they were talking about is Wiener was saying, let's help people with addictions by giving them a safe space in order to perform the 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 use of narcotics of drugs okay drug use can we say drugs a safe place where people can 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 use drugs and schellenberger was saying no don't do that and the lady sitting next to him was saying just force people to go to rehab and Get them off the street like it's the easiest thing in the world. Now, I want us to... Now, I know everyone that I'm using this because it's an easy thing for you to pick a side on. It's either you believe that we should give people safe spaces where they can use drugs in an environment where they can be helped and there's someone there who will, you know, revive them if they overdose. That's an easy thing to you know choose or you can choose no don't take drugs you're just making it easy for them you're enabling bad behavior right it's easy to see where you fall on now i want us to apply that though to this whole small churro and bazonga issue now we have one side of people who might say look if you have a small churro get over it stop defining yourself by it Focus on work and making money and just use that as the system to get power. 
Now, I feel like Schellenberger might fall into that category, in my imagination. And then you have Wiener, who you might say, look, if you have a huge bazonga, if you have a, a small churro, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have, you feel that you're part of the community and that you don't have to change who you are in order to be accepted. And we should have spaces where these discussions can be had so that it's not just, you know, an a text message from one of your girlfriends who's like, ha look at this dick pic this guy just sent me. That's really ugly. It's, it's disgusting or whatever people say. <laughs> I'm just saying, look, I do research. I've seen things. So I think it's the responsible thing is to pick that side, right? Because we've done the Schellenberger way in this scenario I'm inventing, which is just acquire things, get power, and you'll win. And that never works out well. We've seen how that destroys communities and it politicizes things. And then once that happens, it destroys personal relationships. But if we do this way, where we actually focus on people's individual personality and their spirit and their vibes then we get to build communities and that has a positive impact on personal relationships because it makes you think twice before judging someone based on that or that because ultimately none of that really matters in 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 in, in the grand scheme of things because this, well, this and that both make this. <laughs> so it doesn't matter um, what, what it is, what it, what it, you know. But only 1% or 10% of the people will agree with that because, you know, that's the romantics. And so to the rest of you, I know this video is not going to, change your mind or make you, you know, turn off a new leaf or anything. But just just think about it for a second. I mean, the I'm so passionate about this because I've seen it. If I just had stayed, uh, you know, by myself and not gone and done the research, I would have been those people who's just like, Haha, whatever, that's your problem. But now I, I, I even developed, I, I wrote an entire pilot episode um, of a show called Simple. And the solution that I provide in Simple for guys is that focus on emotional intimacy. Now, like I said, because I researched my work, every single show that I'm producing and writing has a message in it and a psychological neuro-linguistic programming thing in it that actually helps you become okay with who you are. I'm not just making shit to exploit you. I'm making stuff so that you get better in your mind. And so in the show called Simple, which if you click on my channel, go to videos, go to shorts, and look up simple, these 12 rules, 15 videos of the simple show, you'll get an idea of what I'm trying to do there, of what I'm doing there. And what I'm doing is, I know you have red pull and you have blue pull and black pull. Well, I have a simp pull. And simple is all about emotional intimacy. And I do that by poking fun at the modern dating rituals that peop that men and women have. Um, it's a heterosexual show, but we do have some crossover with other communities. Um, so it's very inclusive. <laughs> That's the buzzword. If you say it's inclusive, everybody loves you. So it's very inclusive, it's diverse. Um, we even, you know, talk about DEI. Um, diversity, equity, and uh, inclusion. Is that what it stands for? DEI, okay, going into 
academic land come back come back to youtube come back um so the purpose of that is to help men in particular all men to realize that it's about emotional intimacy right it's like what Senator Weiner was saying in, in the Dr. Phil episode. He was like, this is not about politics or whatever. It's about not wanting people to die in an alleyway. It's like, can we just go back to that simple principle of humanity that we just don't want people to suffer? And that's what I'm doing, but not obviously in that context, in the context of emotional death because you have 90 percent of men walking around and they're emotionally dead there's nothing behind the eyes absolutely nothing connecting their hearts to their speech to their gut it's all performative masculinity being a boss being cool having abs having money having cars it's fucking tiresome and it's boring but the algorithm loves it but what I'm saying is this whole internet thing is an experiment we don't know what's going to happen in a hundred years time and so what do you have to lose from just developing yourself as a full human being instead of giving yourself over to you insecurities as time goes on all the synthetic you know things holding society together are falling apart one by one and the cream always rises to the top and the cream is rising now you're starting to see the cream rising and it's going to rise and it's going to splash all over your face and it's going to be too late so if you want to act in my pilot for The Simple Show, send me a message. There are six characters in the pilot. Um, it's a fun show. And like I said, the message is about men building emotional intimacy so that you don't end up like the Red Pill community nut jobs or the Black Pill people who are just nihilists or the Blue Pill people who are conformists <laughs> be you <laughs> that's the point because that's what's going to set you apart regardless of your of your churro or bazonga okay <laughs>